Dang, I really had my money on the elf girl. Oh well, better luck next time. What's up, it's Truth Hero, and welcome to this review of Goblin Slayer episode 10. As I'm sure you've noticed, it was a filler episode, but it's leading up to a huge battle which I anticipate in the next one. And even though our characters talked more about food and drink than anything else in this episode, there are two themes of it that I'd like to discuss. One is motivation, specifically that of revenge. The other one is the ultimate futileness of our efforts. Let's get into it. Now, the beginning of this episode is really interesting because we get a look at Goblin Slayer's dreams. Orkbolg is reflecting on his childhood and what his aspirations were. He wanted to grow up and be an adventurer, be the hero, slay the dragon, rescue the princess, and save the people. However, he hasn't done this, and right now, he can't do this. But it's not because he's never been afforded the opportunity to do so. It's not because he's not strong, it's because of his motivations. As we know, Goblin Slayer is solely driven by revenge to slay goblins, to make an amends for the women in his life who have been hurt by them and his childhood trauma. But this revenge and this motivation ultimately makes him stoic and often oblivious to a lot of things in his life, even the chance to become an adventurer and not solely worry about goblins. It also makes him oblivious and ultimately numb to a few other things, such as female attention. Goblin Slayer, for whatever reason, has quite the fan club now. When him and Farm Girl go into town and go their separate ways, Goblin Slayer is introduced to other female adventurers. He then meets up with his guild or his party, which includes other female adventurers. Then there's the women working in the quest shop, and finally, some friends that he meets in taverns in the quest shop along the way. He's quite apprehensive about these women, even the guy friends. He refuses to eat with anyone. When he sees Farm Girl again, she's quite surprised by the amount of friends he has, and there's quite a bit of sexual tension. My question for you guys is, who does Goblin Slayer like? Comment below. We certainly know that Farm Girl likes Goblin Slayer, and if you didn't have enough evidence for this already, at the end of episode 10, she pulls him on to her. <laughs> Talk about sexual attention. I also believe that the priestess girl likes Goblin Slayer, but it's more of a little crush from a first time adventurer. But seriously, who do you guys think Goblin Slayer likes? Personally, I think he's still too oblivious and numb from his general stoic demeanor and the fact that he's always thinking about killing, killing goblins from revenge, to even notice any affection. On a more happier note, Sword Maiden sends a letter to Goblin Slayer. In this letter, she informs him that her nightmares about goblins and trauma have actually stopped since he pledged to always slay goblins, even in her dreams. It just goes to show that sometimes when we understand someone's trauma and even just listen to it, it really puts them at ease and calms them down. In the middle of this episode, we get into a discussion about how adventurers will eventually age and either die in retirement or die in the line of duty. Goblin Slayer is an adventurer and he's no different. Even though he's not aging right now, he was pretty badly injured, and hence this is why he's having his armor repaired. Farm Girl wonders whether or not she'll be with Goblin Slayer in the future. She wonders what he's going to do when his time comes. Personally, I feel that Goblin Slayer is too blinded by his trauma and the fact that he only has revenge for goblins to see anything else but being an adventurer and slaying goblins. He doesn't see Farm Girl, he doesn't see any woman, and he certainly doesn't see a future for himself where he settles down. The other theme of this episode is the vainness of all our efforts, and how sometimes, no matter what we do, nothing changes and our actions are always futile. We've seen this before when Goblin Slayer pledges to Sword Maiden that even if nothing changes, he'll continue to slay goblins. To me, Orkbolg is a person that's much like someone who is doggy paddling in water. They're not drowning, they're keeping their head above water, but they're never really out of danger or making progress. In this episode, it's quite apparent that no matter how many times heroes save the day, evil will always lurk around the corner, whether it's a new demon lord or his army that continues to terrorize people. The best example of this futile on this is actually at the end of the episode where we see the footprints of countless goblins right outside the farm. It shows us that even though we constantly fight evil wherever it lies, even in the faraway water town, it always has a way of showing up at our doorstep if we don't take it seriously. Rather fitting, because right before Orkbolg makes this discovery, 
Farm Girl's uncle questions if his daily paranoid patrols are even necessary. I guess we got our answer. As always, thanks for watching. I'm really looking forward to the next episode where I hope we see some amazing battles with goblins. Also, comment below, who do you think Goblin Slayer likes, if anyone at all? If you like these Goblin Slayer episode reviews and want to see more Goblin Slayer content, consider enrolling in my adventure party by hitting the subscribe button down below. And until next time, see ya. Thank you.